My oral hygiene routine is very simple, but it's very effective because I always get an A plus report from my dentist. And so whatever I'm doing must be working, but I keep it very simple. I brush with, I brush twice a day and I floss twice a day. And I use the Philips Sonicare uh, toothbrush. And this is just the ordinary base model, in fact, but I keep with the original basic. I think it's called the Essence or E-Series, but I like it. And so I don't, it's not broken, so I don't fix it. It works very well for me and I like the, uh, I like that very much. So I brush using that and then the toothpaste I use, many of you have asked me how I keep my teeth so white. So first of all, thank you. <laughs> and I use uh, Optic White by Colgate, the toothpaste. I've used this for many years. This was actually a recommendation from my dentist many years ago, but I use this and it is very effective. I can attest to this. It has 3% hydrogen peroxide, as well as a host of other uh, chemicals, <laughs> I'm sure, that aid in teeth whitening. But to that end, I will say that I don't, I'm not a wine drinker and I only drink a singular 10 ounce cup of coffee every morning. So I'm not, um, consuming things that would stain my teeth habitually, so that might have something to do with it. For floss, I like the, the Oral-B Glide floss. I love that. And then I do use a tongue scraper, and this helps uh, prevent bad breath. So I use this tongue scraper. And then once every three to five years. It's very effective and I'm just telling you what I use. I'm not recommending that anyone do this, <laughs> but once every several years, I will use a Crest White Strips and these work, these definitely work. And the reason I say once every several years is because long time ago, I was doing this once a year. I would do one kit of Crest White Strips a year and I found that to be unnecessary because my whitening effect, the whitening effect would last for many, many years. So as I said, I want to minimize my exposure to these chemicals, although effective, I'm sure they are not the best for um, not only the oral health, but just health in general, because I'm sure they're laden with chemicals um, that to, to produce that whitening effect. <laughs> but I do enjoy having white teeth. So for me, I find that number one, I don't need to use an entire kit. I'm laughing because on the package itself, it says use full kit <laughs> and I never use the full kit. I use like two or three of these at the most at a time. And then I don't need to use them for like three or four years. So this one in fact has expired, but rest assured, I will still use it. I have no problem using it. Um, it's, I'm not going to let it go to waste and I'm not going to buy an entire new kit because it takes me so long to uh, go through one kit because I, I never use the full one. So that's my hygiene routine as it is. It's very simple. And one thing I wanted to mention is that I never use mouthwash. I never have used mouthwash, but I certainly don't use mouthwash now. Uh, and that is because, well, number one, I've just never used it. But number two, there is some research that has been, um, that has linked mouthwash usage, habitual mouthwash usage, I should say, with um, increased levels of insulin resistance, which is uh, pre-diabetic stage and also a compromised vascular function. And that is because mouthwash rinses away that oral microbiota, the good bacteria in our mouth. And our mouth, just like any other part of us, has its own microbiota, our own microbiome. So that oral microbiome has, uh, it, in long story short, it needs to be there intact for the system to work harmoniously and the way that the body was intended to do. And mouthwash impedes this by reducing the nitric oxide. And reduced nitric oxide in the mouth is linked with increased insulin resistance and potentially harmful effects on uh, vascular function, like I said. Looking further into this research, the methodology um, around this research is a little bit murky, so I wouldn't 
I wouldn't, um, I would take this with a grain of salt. But that being said, I do think it's enough to compel someone who is using mouthwash to discontinue usage of it. And then me, as someone who's never used it anyway, I'm certainly not going to start using mouthwash because I don't see any potential benefit that would outweigh that, um, that uh, potential negative effect. That routine aside, I'd like to talk about what's more important here and that is the health of our teeth and gums and as i say with anything on the surface it starts from within so it really does start with uh, diet optimizing your oral health starts with looking at your diet so let's take a look at some of the foods to include and also to avoid or eliminate um, so as to optimize your uh, health of your gums and teeth one of the best foods for oral health in general and general health is fatty fish. So these are your salmon, mackerel, sardines, tuna, trout, these fatty oily fish. These are good for us anyway, as we know, but these fish are good because they are high in vitamin D, which works synergistically with vitamin A and K2 to help deliver the calcium to our bones. So even more important than calcium is vitamin D and K2 because that's what shuttles the calcium to our bones. So it's um, strengthening the enamel of the teeth from the inside out. Oily fish is also naturally high, as we know, in omega-3 essential fatty acids. These are anti-inflammatory compounds that uh, prevent gum disease by way of preventing that inflammation, um, such as bleeding gums um, that can eventually lead to periodontitis. So including oily fish in the diet is good not only for heart health and skin and everything, organ health, human health, but it's very good for oral health. The second food I want to emphasize is leafy green vegetables. So things like turnip greens, Swiss chard, dandelion greens, arugula, we all know these dark leafy green vegetables. Again, good for our health overall in general, but these dark leafy greens, due to their high mineral composition, are great for mineralizing the teeth. They have an antibacterial property as well, especially if you are mindful to chew them thoroughly, which we should do with any of our food, but chewing them thoroughly will help kill germs, the bad kind of germs, in between the teeth that can lead to plaque formation and eventually cavity formation. So it has an antimicrobial, antibacterial effect that's excellent for teeth. And fun fact, onions have the same effect. Onions have an antimicrobial property, particularly onion juice. So if you are an onion lover like I am, and you put raw onions on your salad, for instance, or you put onions in your kimchi, things like this, that onion, the juice particularly in the onion, has that antiseptic, antimicrobial effect naturally. That's very good for supporting the oral microbiome. And in turn, this has benefits for the heart health because of the increase in nitric oxide due to the consumption of dark leafy green vegetables. The third food to focus on is chocolate. And I'm speaking specifically of 100% unsweetened, that bitter dark chocolate. I happen to love it. I think it's an acquired taste, but I have acquired it <laughs> successfully. And I know many people are not inclined to eat that bitter dark chocolate, but um, try and condition your palate to it because chocolate, unsweetened, 100% bitter, that baker's chocolate, that type of chocolate or cacao has an extraordinary number of benefits because of the polyphenols contained in it. It's the same type of polyphenols found in green and black tea, in coffee. Um, these powerful plant pigments are rich in antioxidant power. They have anti-cancer effects, anti-inflammatory effects, general anti-aging effects. So very beneficial to include in the diet. The polyphenols in unsweetened chocolate, they kill cavity-causing bacteria. And it prevents, in that way, it prevents the formation of plaque in between the teeth. So it's also delicious, I find. I love that bitter taste, but I understand that it's not to everyone's liking. But I would encourage you to condition your palate to it. You can condition your palate to enjoy anything. In my experience, I used to hate fish when I was little. 
and now it's one of my favorite foods. You can, I've done this with myself in many, uh, with many foods. You can absolutely train your palate to not only consume these foods, but enjoy them. So I, that's my hope for each one of you because uh, so many of these foods that I talk about, uh, be it green tea or chocolate, dark leafy greens, they have benefits to the whole body, but definitely for the teeth and gums, they have far reaching benefits. So if you are consuming these on a regular basis, not only will they feed your organs and your body will thank you, but they will aid in health, healthy gums and teeth and a beautiful smile, which is something that we all want. And I am trying to smile more often. My motto is <laughs> always, you can practice things. And so I am trying because it's not in my nature. Side note, it's not that I'm not a happy person. I'm just not very expressive in my physicality. And that is a factor of my personality, but we are all different. So please embrace people who are different. On, I'm going on a side note here, but just hear me out. Embrace people who are different. Instead of being so judgmental and critical in a negative way, like why isn't she smiling more or why isn't fill in the blank, whatever it is. Each of us has these differences and they are what make us unique and beautiful, um, not something to necessarily criticize. Although I understand that the internet is not, <laughs> is not always a uh, welcoming, uh, non-critical place, but uh, I guess my point is kindness doesn't cost anything. So be kind to everyone. Going back to the topic at hand, pardon me. <laughs> uh, the next food I wanna talk about is eggs and grass-fed liver. These two foods are high in vitamin K2 and vitamin K2, as I said earlier, is important for calcium uh, absorption as well as vitamin D absorption. They work synergistically in the body to help each other. And these are two critical nutrients specifically helpful for oral health. So while other mammals have an enzyme that can convert vitamin K1 to K2, humans lack that enzyme to properly make the conversion. So I'm making this point because it's very important that we consume foods that contain vitamin K2 because we need to assure or ensure, pardon me, we need to ensure uh, sufficient amounts. So we need to get it through foods and foods like whole pasture raised eggs are an excellent source of K2. Grass fed dairy like grass fed ghee, butter, cheeses, um, kefir, these things, beef liver, chicken liver, goose liver, these are high in K2, and natto, which is fermented soybean, very popular in Japanese cuisine. So choose one or more of these foods to get your vitamin K2 because it's not sufficient to consume vitamin K1 because our bodies simply cannot make the conversion. We lack the enzyme, so it's impossible. Grass-fed is worth buying because it has higher amounts of omega-3, higher amounts of vitamin D, A, E, and K2 compared to their non-grass-fed counterparts. So it, it does cost more, but it's worth it because as I say, health is an investment. So if you're going to spend money on anything, if you're going to splurge on anything, it's my opinion that you should splurge on what you put into your body because it's an investment in your future health. Vitamin C is another nutrient that is very beneficial for uh, the teeth. Although overconsumption of citrus fruits is linked with deleterious effects on the teeth because of their acidic nature, of course, um, moderate consumption of foods like oranges and grapefruits and lemons are linked with obviously uh, sufficient vitamin C consumption, which is good for the health of the gums and teeth. Again, this slows the progression of gum disease and lowers the inflammation in the mouth due to the antibacterial uh, nature of the vitamin C contained in the citric acid. Equally important, if not more so, as it is to include beneficial foods in our diet, it's just as important what we eliminate or at least minimize in the diet. So the last thing I want to say is that 
you all know, we all know, I think as much as people in the nutrition space disagree on everything, one thing we can agree on is that consumption of sugar is, uh, it has negative consequences. So we want to eliminate, uh, avoid completely, or at least minimize significantly our consumption to sugar and ultra processed foods. We should do this anyway for general health. And no, I'm not telling you to never eat bread or pasta or refined grains, uh, cookies and crackers and things like this. Once in a while is totally fine. But I'm talking about a daily consistent diet. I certainly would not include sugar in my daily diet. Um, it's not something I would personally do nor recommend doing. At least that's one thing people can agree on is that sugar uh, has negative consequences. It's a non-nutritive substance that has far-reaching effects on the whole system, actually. So that's number one. So focus on cutting back or better yet eliminating or avoiding altogether sugar and ultra processed foods and avoid drinking sugar laden soft drinks. So we all know what to include and to avoid. And many of these foods are the foods I spoke about are uh, included in my champion foods list. So these are good foods for the body in general, the whole body, all the systems of the body. So if you consume these foods with regularity, your body will say thank you. <laughs> and you will, it will, it will come out in the skin and the hair and the, all the tissues. It will come out because these are the building blocks. I suppose what I'm trying to say is we are what we eat. Deliberate choices that we make each day, our habits, these habits make up our lives. So choose wisely and be mindful and thoughtful about what you put into your body, certainly, but also taking action to have these good habits, like taking care of your skin each day, taking care of your mouth, your oral hygiene each day, taking care of your sleep hygiene. We all know what to do. So the key is doing it. Um, like I say, knowledge is not power, but applied knowledge is power. So I wish you all the best of luck and power to you, <laughs> power to me. Good luck, good health, and the best of success to you. And I'd like to thank each and every one of you. I appreciate each of you truly for being here. And thank you so much for watching. And you shall see me very soon.